Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. We were at such a desperate place that Andrew, it was like life. It was just life that was coming from the television. And every area in our life has been turned right side up. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Monday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today I'm continuing a series that I started last Monday, a week ago today, talking about the power of partnership. And in the first week, I covered a lot of really, really important things. I haven't got time to go back through that. I want to get into some other things this week, but I tell you, it's very important that you mix faith with your giving. It says over in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2, that the word preached unto them did not profit them, not being mixed with faith, in them that heard it. And I really believe that when it comes to giving, that the average Christian today gives where they're pled with, where they're condemned, where they're badgered about, where they're begged, where they are touched emotionally, and all of those things in their place, there may be some benefit of that, but I'm telling you, most people don't give in faith. They give emotionally. They give as they're touched by certain things. FOR YOU TO REALLY WALK IN THE PROSPERITY THAT GOD HAS FOR YOU, YOU NEED TO GIVE ON PURPOSE. AND I'M DEALING SPECIFICALLY WITH with, uh, PARTNERSHIP. AND FOR YOU TO HAVE PARTNERSHIP BENEFIT YOU, YOU'VE GOT TO UNDERSTAND THE REAL POWER THAT'S IN PARTNERSHIP. SO I'VE ALREADY LAID A FOUNDATION. LAST WEEK WAS REALLY GOOD. I ENCOURAGE YOU TO GET THAT, GET THE TEACHING. WE'RE OFFERING CD'S AND DVD'S ON IT. WE ALSO HAVE A DVD WITH FIVE TESTIMONIES ABOUT PEOPLE WHO HAVE PUT THESE TRUTHS TO PRACTICE IN THEIR LIFE AND HOW IT'S PROSPERED THEM. AND THEN I HAVE A BOOK ENTITLED FINANCIAL STEWARDSHIP, AND THIS IS REALLY POWERFUL. IT'S NOT PROSPERITY OR ANY OF THE OTHER NAMES, ALTHOUGH I AGREE WITH THOSE THINGS. THIS IS TALKING ABOUT STEWARDSHIP. IF YOU COULD UNDERSTAND PROSPERITY FROM THE STANDPOINT OF BEING A STEWARD, THAT WOULD MAKE ALL OF THE DIFFERENCE. IN PROVERBS CHAPTER 18, VERSE 16, IT SAYS, A MAN'S GIFT MAKETH ROOM FOR HIM AND BRINGETH HIM BEFORE GREAT MEN. YOU KNOW, FOR YEARS, I THOUGHT THAT THIS WAS TALKING ABOUT A MAN'S ANOINTING, HIS TALENT, HIS ABILITY, LIKE GOD HAS GIVEN ME A a TEACHING GIFT. AND FOR A LONG TIME, I THOUGHT THAT THIS WAS TALKING ABOUT WHATEVER THAT TALENT OR GIFTING IS, THAT GOD HAS GIVEN YOU, IT WILL PROMOTE YOU AND OPEN UP A DOOR AND BRING YOU BEFORE GREAT MEN. BUT AS I STUDIED THIS MORE, I FOUND OUT THAT'S NOT WHAT IT'S TALKING ABOUT. LET ME JUST SHARE THIS WITH YOU. THESE ARE NOTES FROM MY LIVING COMMENTARY. AND THE HEBREW WORD THAT WAS TRANSLATED GIFT HERE IN PROVERBS CHAPTER 18, VERSE 16 IS MATAN. IT'S M-A-T-T-A-N. AND IT MEANS A PRESENT. THAT'S THE DEFINITION OF IT. AND THIS SAME WORD WAS USED FIVE TIMES IN THE OLD TESTAMENT, GENESIS CHAPTER 34, 12, NUMBERS 18, 11, RIGHT HERE IN PROVERBS CHAPTER 18, VERSE 16, AND THEN PROVERBS 19, 6, AND ALSO PROVERBS 21, 14. LET ME JUST READ SOME OF THESE OTHER TIMES THAT THIS EXACT SAME HEBREW WORD WAS USED AND SHOW YOU THAT THIS IS NOT TALKING ABOUT A TALENT OR A GIFTING BUT RATHER IT'S TALKING ABOUT A GIFT, A MONETARY OR A PHYSICAL GIFT. IN PROVERBS CHAPTER 19, VERSE 6, THIS EXACT SAME WORD IS USED, AND IT SAYS, MANY WILL ENTREAT THE FAVOR OF THE PRINCE, AND EVERY MAN IS A FRIEND TO HIM THAT GIVETH GIFTS. THAT'S THAT EXACT SAME WORD. AND IN THAT INSTANCE, IT'S VERY OBVIOUS THAT IT'S NOT TALKING ABOUT THAT YOU'RE GIVING AN ANOINTING OR A TALENT, BUT RATHER YOU ARE GIVING SOME KIND OF A PHYSICAL OR MONETARY GIFT. IN CHAPTER 21 AND VERSE 14, THAT SAME WORD IS USED, AND IT SAYS, A GIFT IN SECRET PACIFIETH ANGER, AND A REWARD IN THE BOSOM STRONG wrath. IN BOTH OF THESE INSTANCES, IT'S VERY CLEAR TO SEE THAT IT'S NOT TALKING ABOUT SOME KIND OF A TALENT OR AN ANOINTING. IT'S TALKING ABOUT A GIFT, A PHYSICAL OR A MONETARY GIFT. SO LET'S GO BACK AND PLUG THAT IN TO PROVERBS 18, 16, A MAN'S GIFT, HIS his PHYSICAL GIFT OR HIS MONETARY GIFT MAKES ROOM FOR YOU AND BRINGS YOU BEFORE GREAT MEN. NOW THERE'S A LOT OF PEOPLE THAT DON'T LIKE THIS. THERE'S A LOT OF PEOPLE THAT TAKE OFFENSE AT THIS AND SAY, WELL, this THIS IS LIKE A BRIBE. YOU'RE USING MONEY TO MANIPULATE PEOPLE. 
Did you know money is not moral or immoral? It's amoral. And you can use money, yes, as a bribe. You could use it to get a person to do something that they don't want to do, but you could also use that same money to bless a person. You know, you can take a $100 bill, and I could use that $100 bill to pay a prostitute. I could use that $100 bill to bribe a politician. Or I could use that $100 bill to give to you and say, God loves you, and He just wants you to know that, that He loves you, and this is a token of it. And did you know that same $100 could mean different things? It's really not the money that is right or wrong. It's the motivation of the heart. And so when we talk about using money to uh, open up a door for you and bring you before great men, people just automatically think that this is talking about some type of a bribe or using it in a negative way. But it can be done in a positive way. You can use money to open up a door for you spiritually. You can tap into the anointing that is on a person when you start giving. It opens up a door to you in the spiritual realm. It releases something into your life. Now, that's probably a brand new thought to the majority of people, but I believe that that's exactly what this is saying, that money, your gift, opens up a door for you and brings you before great men. Now, that is a powerful, powerful truth. Did you know when I was first getting started on television, we were covering, this is back around 19, or excuse me, 2002, somewhere around there, and the Lord told me I was limiting him by my small thinking. And so in 2003, I began to start believing for increase. At that time, we were only on like 3% of American televisions. But uh, we now cover, I mean, we are everywhere in the English-speaking world. We cover 11 time zones in Russia, preaching in Russian. I preach in Farsi. I preach in all kinds of languages. We're seeing things happen. We've had imams born again in Pakistan and in Dubai, and they actually are using my materials and teaching them in the mosque. I don't know how that works, but praise God, the gospel's getting out. So my point is, we've seen a huge increase, and you know how that happened? I took this exact principle that a man's gift will make room for him and bring him before great men. And when I was believing to increase our television from 3% to now, we cover every English-speaking, Russian-speaking, Farsi-speaking, all of these things. We are all over the world. You know how that happened? I actually had a friend of mine who was further down the road than I was in television ministry, and they were believing God to go on uh, PAX TV. And I forget all of the details right now, but anyway, they needed like $900,000 just to buy a piece of equipment. To, I think it was a transponder so that they could send their program or something, and they were needing a lot of money to get this done. So I was at their meeting, and they were talking about this. I needed increase in my television ministry. And so you know what I did? I sold $3,000 a month, which back in 2003, that was a lot of money for me. And uh, I sold this into their ministry on a monthly basis, specifically that my gift would make room for me and bring me before a great man. I believe that my gift would tap into that anointing that was on this minister friend of mine that was uh, much bigger than I was and already doing some things. I saw an anointing on them, and I sowed into that to bless them, yes. And it was a part of their supply, yes. But also, I saw that it was a way of drawing that anointing that was on them towards me. You know, it's like if you see a river flowing by, you could be thirsty, and it's one thing to go, you know, just dip your hand in there and get enough water to help you, but you could actually start digging a channel, and you could divert the, some of that water towards you. And if you kept digging enough, if you gave enough, well, then you could actually change the entire course of that river if you just keep uh, things flowing towards you. And when you give and become a partner with people, in a sense, that's what you're doing. You see this anointing on a person or on a ministry, and you say, man, I want some of that. And instead of just getting enough for a little swallow, you can actually become a partner with them. And when you do that, that gift that you give opens up a door. 
It makes room for you, and it brings you before great men, and it will start drawing that anointing towards you. And so that's what I did. I gave this $3,000 a month towards this other minister's need. I had another situation where years later, as I began to prosper and see some things happen, they had a need of building a building. And this is when we were beginning to start building these buildings here. And I had a minister friend that was in a building program. And so what I did, I gave him $30,000. I sold $30,000 that I could have used here, but I sold it into his building program. And I have done this a number of times. Now, I need to clarify that the I didn't only do it for, so that I could receive. I also wanted to bless Him. It's more blessed to give than to receive. So I'm not saying that's the only reason I gave. That's not the only motivation behind my giving, but I realize that when you give, your gift makes room for you. It opens up something in the spiritual realm, and it starts letting the anointing and the blessing that you see on that ministry come towards you. And I'm aware of that, and I believe for that. And I have used this many, many times. And I'm telling you, when you give, and again, I'm, I'm defining partnership as more than just giving in order to receive your materials. If you, if like, like say for instance, we're offering this CD set, and we say it's for a gift of any amount, we will suggest a certain amount, but there's a lot of people that don't send a thing, and we send it to them anyway. And just in case a person doesn't even want to, you know, they feel like they're imposing on us, I'll tell them that there's two uh, CDs in this set, and we will offer one at a time absolutely free of charge. And so there's many people that will write in and just get them one at a time. They don't get the fancy album cover and stuff like this. But anyway, we make our stuff available to people. And if all you do is give to cover the cost of the materials that you get, well, then that's okay. And that's a blessing. I receive it. And it really does help when people give to cover the materials that they get. But I don't consider that partnership. Partnership is when you go beyond what it costs for you to get materials for you. Like if you go to a church and something and, uh, you know, you are getting a little bit from them and they're ministering to you. And so you put something in the offering to kind of, you know, in a sense, tip them or to pay for what you got. I don't consider that partnership. Partnership is when you go beyond what it takes to get the gospel to you, to get these resources to you, and you start enabling that church or that ministry to start giving and send things overseas and, and start churches in these foreign countries and send missionaries out and minister to the homeless and do stuff. When you start going beyond giving what it takes for you to receive and you start giving so that other people can receive, that's what partnership is. And I believe that partnership needs to be on a regular basis. Because like in my ministry at church, it's the same thing. But, you know, our bills come in on a monthly basis. And what a lot of people do, and I'm not, I'm not griping, I'm just explaining, I'm telling you what a lot of people do, and if the shoe fits, wear it. Wear it. But there's a lot of people that honestly, they will give during the year, but then when it comes time for their vacation in the summer or something like that, take, they take the money that they would have been supporting a church or a ministry with, and they put it towards their vacation. And I'm not condemning you, but I'm saying that that's just not good. And it is typical that in the summer, most people's income goes down. You know why? Do you quit living during the summer? Do you quit getting your paycheck during the summer? No, but what it is, people start using it for trips and for other things, and they aren't putting first the kingdom of God. But the church or the ministry's bills still come in every month in the summer, just like they do in the winter and fall and all of these other months. Partners are people that don't just give occasionally, they don't give emotionally, they don't give just in order to cover expenses. These are people that give beyond what it costs for them. They are consistent, deliberate, on-purpose givers. And when you give like that, your gift makes room for you and brings you before great men. There is something spiritual that takes place when you become a partner with a ministry. Let me just emphasize, like, say, on the negative side of this, over here in 1 Timothy 
CHAPTER 5, VERSE 22, LAY HANDS SUDDENLY ON NO MAN, NEITHER BE PARTAKER OF OTHER MAN'S SINS. KEEP THYSELF PURE. NOW, THIS WAS PAUL SPEAKING TO TIMOTHY, AND WHEN HE TALKS ABOUT LAY HANDS ON NO MAN SUDDENLY, THIS IS TALKING ABOUT ORDINATION. YOU DON'T ORDAIN AND LAY HANDS ON A PERSON AND ORDAIN, SEPARATE THEM TO THE MINISTRY SUDDENLY. AND YOU, BECAUSE IF YOU DO, AND SAY, FOR INSTANCE, THAT PERSON GOES OUT AND STARTS MISREPRESENTING THE GOSPEL AND STARTS STEALING MONEY OR COMMITTING ADULTERY OR WHATEVER THEY DO, YOU BECOME A PARTAKER OF THEIR SINS. IN OTHER WORDS, THERE'S SOMETHING SPIRITUAL TO ORDINATION THAT GOES FAR BEYOND JUST LAYING YOUR HANDS ON A PERSON. YOU KNOW, MY DAD WAS THE CHAIRMAN OF THE DEACONS IN THE BAPTIST CHURCH THAT WE GREW UP IN. AND I REMEMBER AS A KID WATCHING WHEN THEY WOULD ORDAIN SOMEBODY TO THE DEACONSHIP OR TO A PASTOR OR SOMETHING LIKE THAT, AND THEY WOULD HAVE THIS PERSON COME AND THEY WOULD KNEEL DOWN, AND THEN THESE GUYS WOULD GET AROUND THEM AND LAY HANDS ON THEM AND PRAY FOR THEM. AND TO ME, IT WAS JUST SYMBOLISM. I DIDN'T REALIZE THAT THERE WAS ANYTHING REALLY HAPPENING. BUT AS I'VE GROWN, I'M NOT GOING TO TAKE THE TIME TO TURN OVER AND SHOW YOU THESE VERSES, BUT IT TALKS ABOUT THAT WHEN YOU LAY HANDS ON PEOPLE, PAUL TOLD TIMOTHY, STIR UP THE GIFT THAT WAS IN YOU WHICH WAS GIVEN UNTO YOU BY THE LAYING ON OF THE HANDS OF THE PRESBYTERY. WHEN YOU LAY HANDS ON A PERSON, THERE IS SOMETHING SPIRITUAL HAPPENING, MUCH MORE THAN JUST PHYSICAL. YOU ARE SPIRITUALLY IMPARTING THINGS. THERE WAS A MAN NAMED LELAND SHORES WHO WAS ONE OF OUR BIBLE COLLEGE GRADUATES, AND HE WENT TO UGANDA AND HE MINISTERED THERE AND REALLY STARTED OUR MINISTRY IN UGANDA. BUT I ORDAINED LELAND TO THE MINISTRY. AND I REMEMBER THAT WHEN WE LAID HANDS ON HIM, WE PROPHESIED OVER HIM, AND WE SPOKE THINGS. AND I REMEMBER SPEAKING THAT YOU ARE GOING TO MAKE AN IMPACT. YOU ARE GOING TO DEAL WITH THE PRESIDENT AND THE FIRST LADY OF UGANDA. AND WE PROPHESIED THAT AND PROPHESIED FAVOR OVER HIM. AND IT JUST SO HAPPENED THAT I HAPPENED TO BE WITH HIM WHEN HE ACTUALLY WENT AND MENT WITH PRESIDENT Museveni AND HIS WIFE. AND, uh, YOU KNOW, THEY WERE GREETING ME, AND I TALKED TO THEM BRIEFLY, BUT THEN I INTRODUCED LELAND, AND THE MOMENT I INTRODUCED LELAND, IT'S JUST LIKE ALL OF THEIR ATTENTIONS CHANGED, AND THEY FELL IN LOVE WITH LELAND. THEY, they HAD SCHEDULED A 15-MINUTE MEETING. WE WOUND UP STAYING OVER 45 MINUTES, NEARLY 50 MINUTES MEETING WITH THEM, AND IT WAS BECAUSE THEY JUST LOVED LELAND. AND THEY FELL IN LOVE WITH HIM, AND THE FIRST LADY SAYS, ANY WAY THAT I CAN HELP YOU, SHE WANTS TO HELP. NOW, LENAN HAS SINCE THEN GONE ON TO BE WITH THE LORD, BUT THE WORK THAT HE STARTED IN UGANDA IS FLOURISHING. AND WE NOW ARE REACHING, I MEAN, MILLIONS OF PEOPLE IN UGANDA. WE'VE DRILLED WATER WELLS. Uh, WE'VE DONE A LOT OF THINGS TO HELP PEOPLE. AND IT ALL HAPPENED BECAUSE WE LAID HANDS ON THIS MAN, AND THERE WAS SOMETHING IMPARTED UNTO HIM, SOMETHING IN THE SPIRITUAL REALM. AND I WAS ABLE TO SEE WITH MY OWN EYES THE FAVOR OF GOD THAT CAME UPON HIM THAT CAUSED THE PRESIDENT AND FIRST LADY TO JUST GRAVITATE TOWARDS HIM. AND IT CAME THROUGH THE LAYING ON OF HANDS. SO THE POINT THAT I'M MAKING IS THAT JUST AS WHEN YOU LAY HANDS ON SOMEBODY, IT MAY LOOK LIKE IT'S ONLY PHYSICAL, BUT THERE'S SOMETHING HAPPENING IN THE SPIRITUAL REALM. THE SAME THING HAPPENS WHEN YOU BECOME A PARTNER WITH A CHURCH OR WITH A MINISTRY. THERE IS SOMETHING SPIRITUAL THAT TAKES PLACE. AND ON THE NEGATIVE SIDE, PAUL WAS SAYING, DON'T DO IT SUDDENLY. DON'T DO IT WITHOUT PRAYING ABOUT IT AND MAKING SURE BECAUSE YOU WILL BECOME A PARTAKER OF WHAT HAPPENS THROUGH THAT PERSON. AND IF THEY GO OUT AND LIVE IN SIN, YOU'LL BECOME A PARTAKER OF THEIR SINS. BUT ON THE POSITIVE SIDE, IF THEY GO OUT AND DO SOMETHING GOOD, THEN YOU HAVE A PART TO PLAY IN WHAT THEY'RE DOING THERE. AND THE SAME THING IS TRUE WHEN YOU GIVE A GIFT, WHEN YOU SOW INTO A CHURCH OR when INTO A MINISTRY. OF COURSE, THERE IS A PHYSICAL THING THAT IS HAPPENING. OF COURSE, IT BLESSES THE MINISTRY OR THE CHURCH THAT YOU'RE GIVING TO. BUT THERE IS SOMETHING SPIRITUAL THAT TAKES PLACE. THERE IS A CONNECTION THAT TAKES PLACE BETWEEN YOU AND THAT MINISTRY. AND THIS IS EITHER POSITIVE OR NEGATIVE. IF YOU ARE GIVING TO PEOPLE THAT AREN'T REALLY FEEDING YOU, THAT THEY ARE MASTER FUNDRAISERS AND THEY'RE BEGGARS AND THEY'RE MANIPULATORS, AND THEN THEY GO OUT AND THEY MISUSE THAT MONEY, AND IF THEY AREN'T TRULY PREACHING THE GOSPEL, THEN YOU KNOW WHAT? YOU HAVE JUST OPENED YOURSELF UP TO SOME OF THAT SAME SPIRIT, SOME OF THAT SAME FORCE THAT'S IN THEM. BUT IF YOU BECOME A PARTNER WITH A GODLY MINISTRY, ON THE POSITIVE SIDE, WHEN YOU GIVE, THERE'S SOMETHING SPIRITUAL THAT HAPPENS. IT OPENS UP A DOOR FOR YOU. IT MAKES ROOM FOR YOU, AND IT BRINGS YOU BEFORE GREAT MEN. IT WILL PROSPER YOU. 
And you need to believe this, that when you are partnering, you need to expect for that anointing that is on that church or ministry to be flowing towards you. You know, I tell our students all the time, if they're an evangelist, go find an evangelist that you really believe that what they're doing is anointing of God, and you sow into that ministry. You sow where you want to go. If you want to become an evangelist, become find an evangelist and sow into their ministry and start partaking of that anointing and that blessing that's on them. If you want to be a teacher, find a teacher and start sowing into that ministry. If you want to be a pastor, find a pastor, find a good church and sow into that ministry, and you'll start reaping. I know that this is really simple, BUT MOST PEOPLE DON'T THINK THIS WAY. MOST PEOPLE, WHEN THEY GIVE, THEY THINK ABOUT HOW IT'S GOING TO BLESS SOMEBODY ELSE, AND THEY MAY SAY, WELL, WE WANT TO BLESS THIS MINISTRY OR THIS CHURCH AND SEE SOMETHING HAPPEN. BUT YOU ALSO NEED TO RECOGNIZE THAT WHEN YOU SOW LIKE THAT, YOU ARE OPENING UP A DOOR. YOU ARE... uh, FAVOR IS COMING UPON YOU, AND GREAT THINGS ARE GOING TO HAPPEN. THAT ANOINTING THAT'S ON THEM IS GOING TO START FLOWING TOWARDS YOU. MAN, THAT'S POWERFUL. THAT IS POWERFUL. IT REALLY IS PARTNERSHIP. YOU KNOW, I'M NOT GOING TO TAKE TIME TO TURN OVER THERE. WE'RE RUNNING SHORT OF TIME. BUT IN 1 SAMUEL, CHAPTER 30, DAVID WENT AND FOUGHT THE AMALEKITES, AND HE HAD 600 MEN WITH HIM, BUT THERE WAS 200 OF HIS MEN THAT WERE SO TIRED THEY COULDN'T EVEN GET ACROSS THIS BROOK, BESOR. SO THEY LEFT THEM THERE WITH ALL OF THE STUFF, AND THEY STAYED WITH THE STUFF, AND THEN THE 400 MEN WENT ON WITH DAVID, AND THEY FOUGHT THE AMALEKITES, AND THEY CAME BACK WITH ALL OF THIS SPOIL, AND uh, IT SAYS THE CHILDREN OF BELIAL, THAT MEANS CHILDREN OF THE DEVIL, UNGODLY PEOPLE. THEY SAID, WE WILL GIVE EVERY MAN BACK HIS WIFE AND HIS CHILDREN, BUT WE AREN'T GOING TO SHARE ANY OF THE SPOIL FROM THIS BATTLE BECAUSE THEY DIDN'T GO FIGHT WITH US. AND DAVID SAID, YOU ARE CHILDREN OF THE DEVIL. HE SAYS, THAT IS NOT THE RIGHT WAY TO THINK. HE SAYS, THE PEOPLE THAT STAYED BY THE STUFF WILL SHARE EQUALLY IN THE SPOILS WITH THOSE WHO WENT TO THE BATTLE. AND HE SAID IT BECAME A STATUTE THROUGHOUT ALL OF DAVID'S TIME THAT ANY TIME THE SUPPORT PEOPLE GOT THE EXACT SAME REWARD AND SPLIT OF THE BOOTY AS THE PEOPLE THAT WENT TO THE WAR. AND THERE'S A DIRECT PARALLEL HERE. NOT EVERYBODY'S GOING TO BE ON TELEVISION LIKE I AM. NOT EVERYBODY'S GOING TO PASTOR A CHURCH LIKE SO MANY PEOPLE DO. NOT EVERYBODY'S GOING TO BE A MISSIONARY. NOT EVERYBODY'S GOING TO BE AN EVANGELIST or, OR START SOME MINISTRY TO THE HOMELESS. BUT ALL OF THOSE PEOPLE NEED SUPPORT. AND WHEN YOU SUPPORT THEM AND YOU GIVE TO THEM, THE BLESSING THAT IS ON THEM AND THE REWARDS THAT COME TO THEM WILL ALSO COME TO YOU. YOU BECOME A PARTNER WITH THEM. AND YOU WILL REAP A HUNDREDFOLD IN THIS LIFE AND IN THE LIFE TO COME. YOU ARE GOING TO REAP ETERNAL LIFE. YOU WILL HAVE PEOPLE THERE TO WELCOME YOU INTO HEAVEN. AND I GUARANTEE YOU, YOUR REWARDS ARE OUT OF THIS WORLD. WE'VE GOT A LOT OF MATERIALS HERE. THIS IS THE POWER OF PARTNERSHIP. IT'S A TWO-PART TEACHING. I HAVE IT IN CD AND DVD. WE ALSO HAVE THIS BOOK ENTITLED FINANCIAL STEWARDSHIP. AND THEN WE HAVE A DVD WITH FIVE TESTIMONIES OF PEOPLE WHO GOT FINANCIAL BREAKTHROUGHS BECAUSE THEY BECAME PARTNERS AND began TO SUPPORT THE WORK OF THE LORD. I WANT THIS MINISTRY TO PROSPER AND I WANT IT TO GO AS FAR AS POSSIBLE. I'M RECEIVING SO MUCH FROM THE MINISTRY. I HAVE TO BE A BLESSING TO THIS MINISTRY. YOU GET TO A POINT WHERE IT'S LIKE, WHAT CAN I DO FOR THIS MINISTRY NOW? AS OPPOSED TO NOT, WHAT CAN IT DO FOR ME? WHAT ANDREW'S DOING, I'M DOING IT WITH HIM WHEN I PARTNER WITH HIM. JAMIE AND I ARE HERE JUST TO THANK YOU SO MUCH FOR BEING PARTNERS WITH US. I TELL YOU, WE ARE REACHING AROUND THE WORLD. I REMEMBER WHEN JAMIE AND I WERE IT. I WOULD RUN THE SOUND WHILE SHE WAS DOING THE PRAISE AND WORSHIP, AND THEN SHE'D COME BACK AND RUN THE SOUND WHILE I WAS PREACHING. WE DID IT ALL OURSELVES. NOW WE HAVE SO MANY PEOPLE HELPING US, AND IT COULDN'T HAPPEN WITHOUT YOU. IT'S VERY TRUE. WE'RE VERY THANKFUL FOR OUR PARTNERS AND WHAT THEY'RE DOING, AND YOU'RE GOING AROUND THE WORLD, TOO, AND EVERYTHING THAT THIS MINISTRY DOES. AMEN. SO WE JUST WANTED TO SAY A SPECIAL THANK YOU AND uh, WE LOVE YOU. AND EVERY GOOD THING THAT IS HAPPENING THROUGH THIS MINISTRY, YOU'RE GOING TO SHARE IN EVERY ONE OF THOSE REWARDS. SO GOD BLESS YOU. THANK YOU FOR BEING A PARTNER WITH US. TODAY, ANDREW'S MAKING HIS ENTIRE CD ALBUM TITLED, THE POWER OF PARTNERSHIP, AVAILABLE ABSOLUTELY FREE TO ANYONE WHO REQUESTS IT. THIS OFFER IS LIMITED TO ONE FREE ITEM PER HOUSEHOLD AND IS AVAILABLE IN THE U.S., U.K., CANADA, AND AUSTRALIA. ALSO AVAILABLE TODAY IS THE POWER OF PARTNERSHIP PACKAGE. 
which includes the Financial Stewardship Book, the Financial Breakthroughs DVD, and your choice of either the Power of Partnership CD or DVD album. This package has a catalog value of $45, but you can get it today for only $32. Hopefully the Lord's been speaking to you about the power of partnership through these programs, and I'm encouraging you to please get these materials. This is our gift to you. There's two CDs in this album, and I promise you that this will challenge you and move you to a place of maturity in the Lord that you haven't been before if you haven't become a partner. This is stuff that would change your life, so check it out. Our announcer will give you all the information, but become a partner with us today. Join with Andrew and become a partner today. You can become a partner through our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download additional free resources. You can also order resources or receive prayer by calling our helpline at 719-635-1111. Our helpline is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. To write us, use the address on your screen. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. We'd like to point out Andrew's upcoming speaking schedule. Mark your calendars to come meet Andrew at one of these events and let the Word of God transform your life. In the month of December, Andrew will be in Woodland Park to host the musical production, The Heart of Christmas. The Heart of Christmas is an unforgettable mix of modern day biblical stories with heartwarming familiar seasonal songs and American traditions that represent the true meaning of the season. Next, Andrew will be speaking in Woodland Park. Then drive through our campus in Woodland Park for our live nativity scene. Experience the Christmas story through this immersive live nativity with real actors, animals, and music. And in January, start off the new year with Andrew Womack and guest speaker Bishop E.W. Jackson for the Phoenix Gospel Truth Conference in Glendale, Arizona. For more details on Andrew's next meeting in your area, visit our website at awmi.net. I wanted to let you know that we have now teamed up with a ministry called I Donate so that we can receive cars and boats and stocks and jewelry. We have only done this a very short period of time and already we've had tens of thousands of dollars worth of things donated. People, you know, that don't have cash, but they have something that they want to donate. So if you're interested in that, you can follow the information on the screen and participate, and we would love to help you give these assets to the ministry. I want to let you know that we have now started a Karis Daily Live Bible Study. We've been doing a Bible study every Tuesday night live for about two years, but now we have five days a week. We've varied the times so that we can accommodate anybody's schedule and it's going to really be good. We're going to use our instructors from the school and it'll be a blessing. So remember, we now have a Karis daily live Bible study five days a week.